Welcome, bienvenidos. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of the local consultants, along with Nicole Young, who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments, or CORE, which is a collective impact approach to achieving equitable health and well-being for all people across the lifespan in Santa Cruz County. We're co-facilitating today's conversation on harnessing local data to create the core conditions for stable, affordable housing and shelter with Eva Holt from DataShare Santa Cruz County and Eric Morris from the Santa Cruz County Health Services Agency. Today's session, like other core events, is being held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation, thanks to our team member, Stella Lauerman, who's providing interpretation today, and Gisela Carrasco, who translates comments and questions in the chat. So now I'll turn it over to Eva Holt to tell us a little more about DataShare. Go ahead, Eva. Hi, good morning. Happy to be here with you, Nicole. Um, <clears throat> for those who are less familiar with DataShare, this is an interactive free platform with over 400 data indicators from local, state, and national source sources. This is population health data. We also uh, provide updated versions of local reports and locally managed or locally produced data. DataShare is constantly changing with new indicators being added. This is the central hub of information that aims to create alignment um, between agencies and service providers, community organizers, so that we're measuring shared outcomes with these indicators. The platform also provides easy visualization of previously static data sets and integration of data sets such as the safety net clinic utilization data that previously was not easily available to the public. So um, folks that use the platform include students, researchers, advocacy groups. Um, people also use it for program evaluation and grant writing, as well as funding um, allocation. And uh, DataShare is a collaborative, and we have some guiding principles, including an equity framework. We have these in order to guide some of the decision making around continuous improvement, prioritization of data capacity, literacy efforts, and communication efforts so that we can be best aligned with these principles. Um, the framework also provides some guidelines around how we can upload locally produced data. And I'm happy to get to chat with you today about housing. Thanks, Eva. Now, I'm going to share my screen to show you a little bit about how to navigate in data share see if i can get this to work on on the laptop okay so i'm hoping everyone can see that let us know if you're having any trouble following along and gisella will put um, the link to this in the chat And so if you get to this page, if you want to follow along, great, on your own device, or if you just want to watch what we're doing, that's fine too. So as Eva said, uh, DataShare has a lot going on. So there, it can be a little overwhelming just to see all of the different pieces and to move around it. But it's got a lot of options for you to, um, to, to explore, and we encourage you to do so. Today, however, we're going to look at some of the indicators on the core results menu. I'm just trying to move my notes over, there we go. So the core results menu, for me, the easiest way to get to it, and there are several ways to get to it, is to go on, onto this local progress tab, and it's the very first thing there. But there's a lot of, lot of other goodies under this tab. So for example, um, the CHIP, the Community Health Improvement Plan is here, so is the county strategic plan, some planning information and reporting from cradle to career, some data alignment efforts, some things from the Food, Farming, and Health Policy Council, the uh, SafeRx Coalition, and the Safety Net Clinic Coalition. So you can um, look under each of these tabs if you're interested in information about any of those. And I'll, just while we're here, I'll call your attention to these data spotlights that are more topic um, oriented. And there's one specifically on housing, our topic for today. But back to the core results menu, 
This was developed um, as part of core investments and it's housed on data share, which is great. So that means that it's a subset of a lot of local data that, that are uh, compiled and curated and collected on data share. But the results menu is just a tool to help identify some um, community strengths, some community needs or gaps. And as Eva said, to set some aligned goals for community well-being so that we can track our progress and connect all the different strategies and program outcomes to a variety of other tools like promising practices that I'll show you in a minute and community impacts that are related to each of these eight core conditions for health and well-being. And as you know, if you've attended other core events, these are all connected to each other. Um, they all have a through line of equity at the center and the, the community impacts and indicators on this menu were co-designed and vetted with many partners in Santa Cruz County across lots of different sectors who participated in core conversations, which were larger convenings over the last several years. Um, we had a core steering committee that weighed in on these. And then we had um, smaller sessions with partners like the Human Care Alliance, the Children's Network, the Elderly and Disabled Transportation Advisory Committee, and many, many others. And so um, from all of that, we developed this menu of results. So you can see for each of the core conditions, so here you see health and wellness, lifelong learning and education, economic security and social mobility, but all eight of them have a smaller list of three, four, five um, impacts that are to lead to the ideal conditions for this core condition. And each of those has a set of indicators associated with them. And so a few things to note about these. As, as Eva said, this was an attempt to, um, to provide some set of indicators, but we know that there are still gaps. Um, there are others to explore, and that's part of what we'll talk about today. Um, DataShare has come a really long way since it started in 2019. And that's there's still room for improvement and fleshing these out. And we hope it'll continue to improve and fill out. Even just in preparing for this session, we had some additions to the stable um, affordable housing indicators. And you'll see some of those as we get into our discussion. And what we really want to do today is present you with what we've got and, and how we're thinking about these, but also understand that this conversation is about using data, even when it's got flaws and gaps, um, as a springboard for discussing what we can all do as a community to contribute to equitable health and well-being for everyone in our county. And so the, the expectation here isn't that we have at all points every, every data, piece of data that we need or want, but that we can get closer to that by understanding what's missing and what we can um, do to fill some of those gaps. And so just um, think of this as a work in progress, but one that's, that really is progressing. So today we're gonna split into groups to talk about the three pieces that you see here under stable, affordable housing and shelter. The first is increased inventory of housing, especially affordable housing huge issue in Santa Cruz County and throughout California. Increased avail availability of safe shelter and some indicators that are associated with that and access to safe, stable and affordable housing of all kinds. So th there's a lot of overlap in these categories as you can imagine, but we will uh, um, explore them. I think we have enough people to split into some small, small groups and then we'll explore them together and come back um, as a larger group to report out. We will um, spend about 20 minutes or so in those small groups. And one group will stay in the main room with me and Gisela and Stella, and that group will be recorded. The other two breakouts will not be recorded. And we'll, we're gonna ask if there's anyone in each group who would volunteer to report back, but it's a chance to um, talk about these indicators and explore them together. And any questions before we do that? Once you're in your groups, if you'll just do some quick introductions, your facilitator will help you do that. Um, again, if somebody wants to volunteer to report back, great. 
And then we will um, start a dive into some of these indicators and to see how they fit with other things on data share and how we can think about them um, together as a, a springboard for thinking about improving these in our county. All righty, let me start the breakouts. They only had two people in their group, so we decided to rejoin. And now we're back together in the main room. Hi, everyone. So we don't need a reporter back to the main group. <laughs> and maybe we'll have time to go through more than one, one of these um, sets of indicators together, but I'll start us off. So this is the impact area one, increased inventory of housing, especially affordable housing. And as you can see, if we scroll down here, there are some that have data with comparisons or an option to see more data. And that's true of severe housing problems, which is defined here as overcrowding, high housing costs, lack of a kitchen or lack of plumbing facilities. There is another one about housing cost burden. And this has to do with people spending 30% or more of their household income on housing. We'll come back to that in just a second. We have some, some others specifically about rental housing affordability that has some overlap with that. I can't see your screen. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Let me fix that. Do you want me to share, Nicole? You know what? I think I had stopped sharing when I left to go to your group. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know that. No problem. You know, you give me a chance to repeat it. Okay, so we're up here. If you're following along, we're on the local progress page in the core results menu in the stable affordable housing and shelter um, core condition. And when you click on that, you get to this page, which has stable affordable housing and shelter, the first impact, increased inventory of housing, especially affordable housing. And what I was trying to show is that these have different levels of um, comprehensive data in them. So some might have some comparisons to other, other data sets and more data available. And some might have, we're gonna come back to this one in just a moment, the housing cost burden. And some have overlap with other categories because they might be a slightly different version of, um, of the data or looking at a slightly different angle. And some of them will have, um, uh, the status of sort of a, a data wish list or something that we don't have data available yet. And so we're trying to fill that in. And so you may see something like here are growth in housing units and the diversity and types of housing units. That's something that was suggested in our review process as an important way to understand this set of indicators in our county, but we weren't able to find data that met the standards of data share at this time. But we know that the data landscape changes so fast that we should keep a placeholder for it here in case those data do become available in the future. And the same is true in for these about the growth in low income and affordable housing units or how many working adults leave our county because of housing costs. So we know some of these things are happening and that they'd be important to track. We just don't have a way to track them yet. And if you know of any, please let us know. Um, and we can talk a little more about how that works with data share, that they need a level of data that they have some confidence in that it's gonna be repeated at regular intervals. So it's not just a one-time data collection and that lets them track these kinds of trends for us. Um, and there's some other standards as well we can go into. But for now, let's explore what happens when you take a slightly deeper dive into some of these, um, these indicators on data share. So if we look at, for example, um, renters spending 30% or more of their household income on rent, it's not hard to see why that in Santa Cruz County would be um, compared to other California counties, we're kind of veering from green to yellow. And if you hover your mouse over these um, graphs, they can show you a little more data. Whoops, sorry, mine's jiggling, there we go. Can you see that pop up? Okay, so that's telling us 
a little more without having to click on the indicator that in Santa Cruz County, we have 18.7% of um, the renters expenditure to income ratio. And that's in the top half of California counties, but barely. And so um, we that's something we'd wanna watch. But when we look at um, utilities, that's maybe because we don't have to, we have milder weather than some places and we don't have to use utilities as much, we do better. But in comparison to Healthy People 2030, which is a national database, national target, we are not doing well. So we're gonna click on that and look at it in a little more detail. So on any of these indicators, if you click on them, you can get a lot more information. So this tells us what we're actually looking at. So a little bit about how it's derived. So here's, it's telling us uh, spending 30% or more of household income on rent, which includes utilities. The numerator is the total estimate of renters and the denominator is the total estimate of renters with household income and rent whose spending has been determined. And so this tells us more about that Santa Cruz County data point. And again, in California, we seem to be doing kind of in the middle of the pack, but compared to US counties, not so good. This also tells you in this corner where the data are from. So in this case, it's from the five-year rolling American Community Survey, a national survey. And it's the most recent measurement period is 2017 to 21. Um, but it's been updated as of February 2023, so pretty recently. And one of the nice things, one of the many nice things about DataShare is that instead of hunting down an individual st statistic or factoid for your work, you can be confident that if it's on here, it's the most recent one available. So as we scroll down, we see a little more information. So we see that there's kind of a blip in this trend line in the 2012 to 2016 timeframe. And it is generally moving in the right direction, but it's still not moving fast enough or thoroughly enough to really um, to help a lot of households. And in this other representation of the data, so there are different, different graphs that you can see. You can, um, click on the, these three bars and export this to your report or your PowerPoint um, or your, your other presentations, if you wish. But this is telling us by age group that the lines in red are significantly worse than the overall value. So this isn't comparing just to other counties in California or elsewhere. It's trying to tell us that for the average, for the county as a whole, the youngest age group and the oldest age group are in rougher shape than the people in the middle. And that, that's because probably it's a ratio of um, two income. And so those are lower income categories in general. We also, if you keep scrolling down, there's some tabs and you can see the same data by regions, census places, zip codes, and census tracts. And if we click on the regional one, it gives us a little more mapping information about parts of our county. So these are pretty similar, but you can see, so they're all way over the Healthy People 2030 target, which is 25.5, but they're different for Mid County, San Lorenzo Valley, North County, and South County. So if, you, if these data are available, by geographic slicing and dicing, this is where you would see it. And that's not true for everything, but it happens to be for this indicator. And again, you have the source. And I also wanna point out this related content section on DataShare for each indicator. So you can see that there are some other things that, that are related to the same issue. There are some promising practices you might wanna look at. There are some other reports and resources. These are funders who are active in this area. And there are just some other things to look at if you wanted to go down a few rabbit holes to look 
more on this topic. So any questions so far? Had anybody else taken a dive into this particular indicator or any of the ones related to it? And as you're looking at this, what kinds of thoughts do you have about any strengths or assets in our community related to this indicator? Uh, the one thing I noticed, uh, Nicole, was that if you scroll on back on the top to where you're showing the breakout between the age demographics or down below. Oh, where did that go? Then you got to go back to county. Yep. I think yeah. an interesting point to make is maybe that the 15 to 24 is maybe perhaps maybe more single along with ages of 65 plus as well. Maybe they're more single compared to the 25 to 35 to 35 to 64 age. I thought that would, that would be a pretty interesting take. It would, yep. Try, trying to make these rents with one income is a very different challenge. um cool to see too at least that it's trending downwards um just by the graph above it um yes. versus the it looks like we're going in the right direction so that's um uh, i don't know the word like and good it's good news hopeful. enticing yeah mm -hmm. yeah thanks for that any other reactions when you do the comparison, Nicole, right now you have it compared to in the lower regional chart with the zip code breakdowns. Um, if you go to region, uh -huh. I'm just curious because when you were showing it before, um, I mean, this is like how you can take a deep dive, I guess. Um, but um, where it says select a comparison and you have the comparison as healthy target. And then if you scroll up, the other choices here would be, could you see the, where it says select comparison right above the map? There's a drop down menu. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can, sh yeah, so you can show it visualized as the trend over time, which is the above graph. Um, can you do compare to Santa Cruz County value? Yeah, let's try that. Uh -huh. uh huh. So this is, I guess, somewhat encouraging, in that, you know, the the income to to rent burden in half of the county are less. Uh, A different map. Yeah. 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 But is very clear delineation in other parts of the county. So. I think, you know, like drilling down, comparing it to the country as a whole, as like, I, I, for me, the healthy targets is a great goal to shoot for, but to bring it locally and to be able to like draw it as um, specific as possible in this way. I feel it's like it's a really powerful. good point, Eva. Yeah, I, I happen to be in the Midwest right now. and. Um, this the what we're looking at in Santa Cruz County for housing and rental costs would be unrecognizable here. Yeah. Um, so what happens if you go to zip codes? I think we have that data yeah. too. And Heather, I, I see your hand up. Do you have a question or a comment? I do. I'd like to see a map that has the density of the rental availability um, uh -huh. versus okay. like who is in in homes that they own that are living in those homes. And then like if I could like pull apart, like how much of the rentals are available for year round rental versus um, like a, a, a rental for um, just visiting. So like a VRBO or. A, right, you know, right. I'd like to be able to kind of like see that to see how it overlays over this map, 
to kind of know why we're green or why we're red and what the density levels are of, of, of potential housing in those areas. That sounds like that out there. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody know of a resource that shows anything like that or any part of that? Um, I'm thinking, Heather, that would be a really interesting trend too, of like losing rental properties to vacation rentals as opposed to yeah. year round. Mm -hmm. Is anybody aware of that being tracked anywhere? I feel like I, I vaguely remember somebody because there was that whole movement to try and get um, there was legislature in in the the county or in either in the county or in the city itself to try and reduce mm -hmm. um, the amount of rental. So I know somebody probably has that data somewhere, but I just don't know who. Well, we will do some digging and see if we can find that. I don't think it's currently on data share, or otherwise we'd know. <laughs> Thanks, Heather, for the idea. Anybody else? What what other things do you see as as missing or or something you know about in some other arena that might be useful to add to this? To, to any of these um, indicators about stable, affordable housing and shelter. Sorry, I'm just gonna unmute myself again. These red density areas are right next to UCSC and Cabrillo. <laughs> just oh. to like, throw that out too. Uh-huh. That's an interesting observation. Yeah, there's certain things you only see on maps, right? Okay, great, thanks. Do you have thoughts looking at this, this map or any of the data we've, we've thought about today about just um, policies or, or programs or practices that are either in place or are needed to keep that trend line going in the right direction. And while you're pondering that, Danu is asking whether there's an option to compare with average household income. You know, I think there's probably a way to overlay the household income maps with this one. I'll defer to Eva and Eric. We yeah. Can, I know we can do two separate maps, but I'm not the overlay expert. <laughs> yeah, you can't overlay them. You can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I've just put a link into the chat to our demographic dropdown. I don't know if you wanna toggle there or not, sure. Nicole. Um, but it's a, it's a super useful page, especially for those comparisons. Um, so if you go to the main page and you, um, you go to the drop down menu of data, there's a demographics page and you'll see on the top, um, bar that, that you can slice and dice by, um, specific breakouts. So race, ethnicity, age, sex, um, household income and housing, education, and employment. So if you go to household and income. You can get the overall summary, which is the entire page going down, or if you're just looking for one specific um, indicator set, it'll give you these comparisons. Um, and I think um, household by income, you can go here and if you press on it Nicole into the name of the indicator um does it give you the map or do you have to go search it out yeah I forgot I yeah there's a lot of ways to look at them so um I always kind of play around with it um it. So this is one way to get an overview um and you can go into this let me see if you go straight into the search bar um, into the search the site you can say income and i think that there is um a, 
a breakout for just do income. Yeah. Well, there's home and renter expenditure to income ratio, which is in our, um, which is in the core site um, or on the core page. But I can't remember if there's a regional comparison map in that one. Oh, medium household income. Does that have a map to it? The second to the last on the indicators on the results? Um, not all of, so this is population health data from, you know, generally large data sources like the, like the American Community Survey or um, census, but here we go. Yeah, so you can compare by a regional comparison. So here it's looking like everyone is just increasing their income. But as you can see, when we break it down um, over time and by race and ethnicity, um, that is not the full story. And then at the bottom, the last breakouts um, that you can do are the regions. So you could you could do this, um, uh, Danu, if you um, were trying to look at a specific region, this might be a helpful way um, to find that specific comparison. So, so Donu, not an overlay of the two, but you could, ex we were saying earlier, you can export these and then you'd have them, you could do a side by side. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for showing the pathway to get to the, um, the same uh, data set, you know, in the map. That, that's helpful. I'm glad it was helpful. I learned something too. And I'm glad Eva was here. <laughs> yeah. The demographics page can, is like, um, yeah, it's quite the encyclopedia and can it give is. you a very structured format for diving into a specific area. And, you know, I'm thinking that it would be kind of interesting and maybe even fun to do a whole session just on the demographics page because it applies to so many others. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and um Danu, I, I I'm sure that not that that many people are curious about those um comparisons and actually the core menu kind of does a little bit of that if you do some deep dives. So, um I didn't I didn't see in the chat exactly um your introduction but is there something specific that you're working on? Um, I mean, it looks like some um, in income equity is of interest, um, but the core results menu, because of the way that it's structured, can have those like comparison values kind of lined up in that menu. When um, Nicole, you first, before we kind of dived right into the data, we, we went over those and that can be really helpful too. You can, each of the maps, each of the graphs is downloadable. So you can add it to, you know, a fact sheet or a PDF sheet. Um, and um, you can also like build a dashboard of data indicators that are useful to, you know, whatever um, particular issue you're working on so that you can always have it as a reference point and share that link with your, um, you know, coalition or whatever group that you're working with. Um, yeah, thank you. No, I, d I didn't come in with any particular um, project or thing I wanted to find, but that's just when we were looking at the um, the information broken out in the map view of, um, you know, housing and, and percentage of income spent on housing. That's just the next logical place my mind went as comparative data to look for. So, yeah. And, and thanks for prompting this example of there, there are you. There's usually a way in data share. It just might take a little bit of of digging and trial and error to find it. And Eva and Eric are available to help. So um, it's not just these sessions, but you can um, send them questions, and they are doing different kinds of training. There are tutorials on the data share site, and it really does reward um, some time spent fiddling around um, with the different drop down menus and uh, tabs and connections because they there's just a wealth there. Every time I go there, I think, oh, I didn't know that was there or um, you know, there's just always something. So um, any other questions? I'm thinking we have time to go through another indicator set. Eva, would you like to share your screen and do, do another one? Sure. Um, let me get get back on track here. Um, 
I started to search for indicators. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see what would be another good one to take a look at. I feel like we did some exploration here. Um, or, or Eric. You want to... yeah, here, I'll do the overcrowded households. Um, so you can go to the um, the core results menu and I'll just put it into the chat. Um, do you want to share your screen, Eva? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I do. I sure do. Thanks. Um, Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm already on the indicator because I was talking while doing it. Um, but you go to the core results menu. You can also type it straight into the search this site. Um, and to kind of put it into its core sandwich, you can look here. Mm -hmm. um, so this is about access. All these indicators are really trying to get at that access question. So we're looking at overcrowded households, um, the homeless population trends, and um, a little bit more about what um, houseless um, and housing, houselessness and housing looks like in terms of permanent housing um, and um, some indicators that we um, would like to know more about. And if we look at overcrowded households, um, you can see the overview comparisons here. You can see more data. Um, and one thing um, just to note is that you can always go straight to a zip code in this drop down menu if there's a particular zip code that you're trying to explore. Also, if you um, are trying to do a select, a select measure period of time. Um, and you can also, um, you can also look and see just for the state. Um, and this overcrowded households, you can see the train trend kind of jumps around, not a huge improvement really, um, over time. And, um, we're next year is when the next five-year survey comes out. So we'll be able to do a comparison kind of over the COVID years as well. Um, you can see here the differentiate differentiators of renters and owners versus the overall, um, who is most overcrowded. Um, renters uh, is quite a huge difference from the overall value. So you can see that it's an 80% difference here. Um, and here we don't have the regional breakdown. So sometimes the population values aren't large enough in order to um, clump them into our county's regions. But um, in this particular case, we can still look at the zip codes. So um, here we can see them all. And the most impacted, um, we have these um, ones in, um, Oh my gosh, Gilroy. No, not Gilroy. Um, this this zip code um, has snuck into our county, but you can see as a comparison, we're we're trying to get it off of the site because it doesn't have to do with our county, but it is interesting to know. Um, but you can see that um, 95019 directly in Watsonville, and again, Watsonville, and again, um, this other um, zip code is up in North County. So you can see that um, how overcrowded households align with different zip codes um, when we have uh, the data for those zip codes. So um, this is another, yeah, another indicator that um, is just very helpful to think about when talking about access. So um, those areas that are more impacted have higher um, access issues. I see, um, Catherine, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, um, just curious. Sorry. Um, I heard that you said that you guys are interested in getting rid of 95012 from your um, data. Well, yeah, it's it's skewing some of the mapping. So we've asked the platform to remove it um, at, at this time. 
But um, did you have a comment about that? Well, just like technic, like Pajaro is not in Monterey or it's in Monterey County, you know, it's not in Santa Cruz County, but like a lot of the resources we found um, are like on that kind of boundary, right? Like Pajaro Valley Loaves and Fishes, we saw like huge uptick in clients when those floods hit, you know, and like, because it's on this, like, they're kind of, it's a forgotten area from both North, you know, cause it's not in Santa Cruz County that like data is kind of forgotten, but then it's also not like, it's not getting the resources from Monterey County. So just, I don't know, you know, like I get it from a data um, way and that it's not part of Santa Cruz County, but like we do see like a majority of our clientele is from like that zip code, if that makes sense, you know? So yeah. yeah. That totally makes sense. And that was actually why we had requested that data or that zip code. Thank you so much for um, just uplifting that um, uh, dynamic. Um, and, and that is actually the reason why we had it added to the site as a special request from um, our, our data vendor. Um, and and actually, it's just recently this spring that the decision was made to remove that zip code. And Nicole, you were part of that decision. I don't know if you want to, that was a, a community request um, from the, I think it was the Childhood Advisory Council, and then it went through our data committee. Um, so I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Just yeah, I, don't have, I don't have anything to add, but um, yeah, these things are always tricky when they're, you know, the, the, the way the data align with reporting jurisdictions like zip codes and census tracts don't always align with how people are living and working in a community. So this is an example of that. So will that data for Pajaro be available anywhere? Or cause like, I don't know of anything. Yeah, there, so there's actually a Monterey um, uh, com, uh, platform. It's okay. a data share Monterey platform. Okay. And it, um, it should be available on that platform. All right. Yeah, Thank so you. you might have to, you know what we just did pulling the data, the demographic data and comparing it to the housing data on a map, you could technically, you could go to the two sites, the Monterey site and the Santa Cruz site, the data share sites and do the same thing. Gotcha. But All it's right. unfortunately an extra step for you. Yeah. Um, the comparisons, um, but the data, the data are still there. The data are still available. They're just not um, included in the, um, the averages and the, um, the county specific information for Santa Cruz. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, just curious. Um, Cause it's like, we have these data shares for County. Is there like a, and like a lot of this data does seem to be for like County specific and there's so much data just um, yeah. County wide that you guys are collecting, but is there any like kind of like data share for state of California or data share for U US, you know, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, there's, so um, without getting too much into the weeds, the the platform is run by a company called Healthy Communities, uh, Communities Institute. Mm -hmm. I, they changed their name. I'm, anyways, so we, so we purchased the platform and the uh, data functions from them. And then we, you know, we add to it and we enhance it. Um, they run, I think it's, over 20 platforms in the state of California. And so you can toggle back and forth between the sites. There isn't, unfortunately, like when you saw that I, if when you do the drop down menus um, for the indicators for comparisons, currently there isn't a way in which like we could compare to Monterey, for example. But that has been on our wish list with the platform, especially for, um, you know, uh, counties that do overlap quite a bit in their services. For example, our South County and uh, Monterey's North County. Um, and so that that is something that we were in contact with um, the folks at the public health department in uh, Monterey who run that platform. And um, that is like a shared wish list. There's also a wish list around at least like a tri-county data sharing. 
um, in some point in the future. Um, but as of right now, you just have to go back and forth between the sites. So there's one in Alameda, there's one in Humboldt, there's a couple in um, Southern California, Orange County, Mariposa. Um, oh yeah, there's but the 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 platform vendor actually has over 200 sites across the country, um, but they don't have, for some reason, the um, capability to um, interact unless you build them out first that way, I think. So it's like a contracting slash data analytics issue that um, we're hoping to someday. But yeah, work. there's... There's definitely interest in the same way that you're talking about it. So I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in the in the future that happens, it's just not available now. Um, and there are county to county comparisons on the county health rankings um, website. I'll put that in the chat. That is uh, run by the Population Health Institute, University of Wisconsin. Um, that's the one that ranked Santa Cruz County um, in the top 10 counties of California in terms of overall health, but it's a much, much, much more limited number of indicators there. It's basically a composite score that they put together. And so they look at, I don't know, 20 or 30 indicators um, as, a, as a picture of a county's health. Um, but that does let you do county to county comparisons for, for different purposes um, nationwide. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, just would yeah. I guess like to put in a word that that would be really cool to have um, that county county comparison and be able to access the data. So, absolutely. Yeah. And it would also make sense in terms of fostering, you know, regional work um, and looking at regional trends and not. Uh, I mean, all, all of this is to try to get out of doing stuff in silos and isolation and disconnected and fragmented and all that stuff. So anything that moves us away from that would be great. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much for explaining. Of course, you're welcome. Any other questions or observations at this point? Is there an indicator or impact area under stable, affordable housing and shelter that anybody would like to explore as a group, bring forward one that you're particularly interested in? Well, now that you say, Deva, I'm more interested in impact too a little bit, and that one is increased availability of, of safe shelter, and I'm going to post it in the chat real fast, and okay. we can go through it. Great. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, no problem. Let me share my screen as well. Okay. So if you've been following along, we're going to go back to the data share website and then we're going to go to the drop down of local progress to the core results menu and then we're going to scroll on down to safe uh, stable affordable housing and shelter and click impact area to increase availability of safe shelter once the page is loaded we're going to be taking a look at unsheltered homeless as the indicator and like eva and nicole both discussed beforehand is that there are these nice little comparison values that you can hover, hover over to see how it is for this indicator. In this case, that it hasn't changed very much with the little blue equal sign compared to the prior value. And it's kind of trending up, which is bad because we want un unsheltered homeless to trend downward. So let's get right into the indicator. If we click into the indicator, it'll take us to more information about the indicator. And if we can see on here, it's if you just look at it, it's kind of trending up, which is not a very good sign. And it seems that a lot of people between the ages of 18 to 24 and then 25 plus are the ones that are be beginning to be homeless, pretty much, or just not having sheltered in, in general. Unfortunately, for this indicator, we don't have like breakout by region and data and that type of stuff. So it's pretty unfortunate. Um, I had a question. So I know like there's like the Santa Cruz County does like that point in time count. And then they ask a lot of survey questions. Um, 
are those survey questions, um, that information, is that anywhere kind of in this unsheltered homeless um, data? Yeah, so this data set comes from um, HUD, which then PIC numbers are reported to HUD. So kind of, it's a bit of a loop to get it back on the site. Um, we also have um, some more specific um, breakouts and you can, um, I want to be respectful. I, do we go to 11.15 with this one or do we go to 11? 11.15. Yes, yes, 11. Okay, great. So we have a little bit of time to um, dive again. Um, so with the PIT count, you we do have... We do have a request to get more specific data on the site. And I don't remember, Eric, if we're still working on it or if it's up already. I think we have some things up and some things are um, still in, in process. It's still in process. A lot of it's like on our end because HCI was like only taking a few indicators from the pit okay. data. Yeah, so it's still in process. You can search the site by... Um, by if there's a specific data source that you're like, I know that there's this source that does population health data for a specific population that I'm interested in, for example, the pit count, um, you can search the site by source um, under um, search for indicators. And it will, I guess I, I can try and do that right now. Um, and, but it'll bring up any, any data that is related to that particular source. Um, so that's like one one way to do it, and we will be updating the 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 pit data um, probably in the next like three months. I would say is a, a, a realistic um, timeline. And I see Keith's hand up as well. Yes, hi. I'm sorry I joined late. I had some computer issues, and I hope maybe no you have not already gone over this. Um, but is there? Uh, and I see in, say, for the example, this indicator here um, on subgroups for different populations, say, I work with a lot of veterans that would say how many veteran homeless would be at a certain area. Um, that's one question about the subgroups. And then the second would be, is there any way to track, say, um, I know the veterans use a lot of HUD bash vouchers or Section 8 vouchers anywhere like where they're concentrated at or where they would be at in a, a certain area, like voucher utilization or what have you. Yeah, so those are actually a couple of the data points that we will be adding to the site in the next few months. Um, there, that's It's data that just because of the way that the numbers are structured, the we have to manage the um, uploading of it, but it is important data, it has um, a lot of value. And we're able to crunch it enough to put it up on the site. Um, and we'll be, if you're on our newsletter, um, we announce all the updates. Um, newsletter comes out every two months. Um, so coming soon. Um, the part that um, we won't be able to respond to is the piece around um, the, the geographic use of vouchers. So we will have a number for the vouchers, but... Um, just the way that the data is collected, it's really hard. I mean, you work in, in this, so I don't have to tell you, but it's it's really hard to track where people are in the county, how the, you know, how services are being used by the same people, et cetera. So um, so that is one one request that we're unable to to fulfill, unfortunately. Yeah. But the numbers will be up there soon. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, Heather, I, I put in the chat in response to your question about how about Section 8 vouchers, just the a general um, housing voucher indicator. And as Eva mentioned, there's some work being done to make that more detailed. Um, and I think this is true of every indicator as as more um, nuanced data become available or are possible by linking different data sets or, or working with them locally, um, it's worth checking back if you, if you don't see something the way that that is most useful to you at any given moment. It's worth checking back periodically. And then also, if you're not already signed up for the data share newsletter, that's where a lot of updates um, can you all keep your eyes out for something that happened policy related 2016 to 2017? 
because even in that that link that you gave me for um for the section eight voucher utilization there was a dip like precipitously at 2016 to mm-hmm. 2017 this unsheltered house homeless has a dip at 2016 to 17 and i believe the first graph we looked at had a weird data blip in that same zone as well yeah does anybody know what that might have been that's a good observation just checking because i don't i don't i don't remember anything happening like a you know, a fire or a flood or anything like that, but maybe it's policy related instead of like the other things. Sorry. It's a good guess, a good explanation um, and worth looking for. I I don't know about this specific indicator, but often when we see a blip like that, it can also do with the way data are collected or some, some new way of collecting data becomes available and it makes something pop in a different way. Heather, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. I was just trying to lower my hand. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. I also, um, sorry, is there anything else you wanted to add about this, Eric or Eva? Mm, Not at this time, no. Any other questions? We hope this has given you just a glimpse of how to explore um, some of the questions that are raised, not just by the data, but by gaps in the data and how we can all contribute to making these um, just richer and more useful resources for all of us. But I also, I went over this quickly at the beginning, mentioning that there was a data spotlight for for housing, but I wanted to just take a moment, or or Eric, if you wanna go there since your screen's already up. Um, So the data spotlight for housing does some um, kind of curating for you of, what, what would we learn about looking at housing data for Santa Cruz County? Here's a snapshot. Um, here are some differences in terms of parts of the county. What, how much more times the minimum wage would you have to earn to afford the average asking rent in our county? What are some variations? Some other, so this just pulls together some of the things that we're talking about that were on the core results menu, but also other, other indicators. And then possibly most usefully for people working on this issue in our county are the compilation of local housing reports that you may or may not be familiar with or may not have seen all in one place. And so this is where they are and where they're updated as well as some strategies that you may wanna explore. And then we had talked earlier about um, some of the data by region. And so if you keep scrolling down where where Eric is now, you can see um, a little more detail about where the different um, parts of the county show up. And then there's a data share survey. So please complete that as well. Heather, is your hand up anew or is that a previous hand up? No, I don't know how it keeps on getting knocked. Sorry. Yeah, I picture I'm picturing you just waving your hands there in the <laughs> in the Zoom room. Other questions or suggestions? Did everybody get to learn about a new part of data share? I'm hoping. I know I did. Well, before we part ways, I wanted to let you know about a couple other events coming up. Um, Today's was actually the last in a series where we had the same kind of conversation and exploration about each of the core conditions. And we welcome your ideas for other topics or other ways to work with um, different parts of data share. We talked earlier about possibly doing a deeper dive into the demographics page. Um, Next week on... Monday and Friday, we have peer learning circles that are a different core format. Um, We've been doing a series related to report writing at this uh, end of the fiscal year time of many reports. And so we had done some about how to report successes and challenges. Um, So next week, we're gonna talk about some data visualization tips and share examples of data visualizations that we particularly love and 
This might be um, related to taking some of the information in data share and turning it into um, great little pieces of your reports or your slides or other presentations. And then we're also going to talk about once you've compiled all that great information for a funder report, how to do more with it since you've taken the trouble to put it all together. So those are next week. Um, you can register with uh, that QR code on the, on the screen here or by visiting the Core Institute events page, which is listed there. And Gisela will put in the chat. So we'd also like to ask you to share your feedback about today's workshop. We thank you all for coming and participating and tolerating our little technical glitches. Um, thanks to Gisela and Stella for the translation and interpretation help and to Eva and Eric, as always, for being such great partners and collaborators in this work. And that's all we've got. And thanks for being here.